Hello. Today we will be going over antibodies to high and low frequency antigens. High frequency antigens are antigens that occur in greater than 90% of the population. However, the majority of these occur in greater than 99% of the population. The rare people that lack these antigens are capable of making an antibody when exposed. So if they've been transfused or pregnant, there's a high probability that they have been exposed to the antigen. Antibodies to a high frequency antigen will react with all cells tested except for the auto control. The auto control being negative is going to key you in to it being an antibody, an allo antibody rather than an auto antibody. If you cross match, it's likely that all donor units will be incompatible and you don't have any rule out cells. So how do you deal with this? Most hospital labs cannot deal with these, so they would refer them to a reference lab. Reference labs will have a panel of rare cells that lack various high incidence antigens, and they'll also have access to a lot of different chemical treatments that will help them narrow down what it could possibly be. They also might have genotyping capabilities, which will also help narrow down what the possible antibody could be. So the reference lab will run the patient's serum and plasma with chemically treated panel cells. And based on that reaction, it'll help narrow down certain blood group systems that react in that certain way. Remember by definition, the patient can make allo antibodies to any antigens that they lack. So phenotyping or genotyping can be very helpful in narrowing down the possibilities. An important thing to remember is red cell phenotyping cannot be performed if the patient has been transfused in the last three months um, because there may still be some donor cells circulating, so you don't want to have any mixed field reactions because you don't know which one is the donor reacting and which one is the patient reacting. When this happens, there are some cell separation techniques that can be used. You can do a reticulocyte separation or if the patient is a sickle cell patient, you can do a hypotonic saline. That will burst all the donor cells and leave only the sickle cells so that you can phenotype those. Uh, if they have been transfused recently, you can also genotype. Genotyping is also very helpful because usually it provides information on antigens that do not have commercial antisera available. U, JSB, and KPB are some examples. Once you determine what the antibody is to, you'll have to find more antigen negative cells so that you can perform rule outs to all the common antigens. So if you perform phenotyping or genotyping, and this is very useful because you can just focus on the antigens that the patient is negative for. Finding compatible blood for these patients can be extremely difficult. We usually start with the patient's family. Ask the patient if they have any parents or siblings that can come in and get phenotyped or genotyped. And then we also suggest that when the patient is healthy enough, they donate so that we can freeze that unit in case they need it in the future. There's also the American Rare Donor Registry as well as some international registries that we can ask. On the other side of the spectrum are antibodies to low incidence antigens. Once we detect an antibody to a low incidence antigen, it's usually not a problem because most donor units are negative for these. And it's still easy to rule out any other significant antibodies because most panel cells are negative for these. Um, usually there's not commercially available antisera for these, so we just do an AHG crossmatch to find compatible units. So an antibody to a low incidence antigen might look like you run a panel and only one cell is positive, or everything is negative, and when you cross match, then you have a reaction. You don't really need to ID these. It's really just for academic reasons that you would go further and pull out selected cells that are positive for low frequency antigens. It's not necessary. As long as you're performing a cross match before you're giving that blood and making sure that it's compatible, you don't have to ID these antibodies. And that is all about high frequency and low frequency antibodies. Let me know if you have any questions.